gospel to the world. In 2016, what a year that was. Wasn't that an interesting year? When you stop and look back at 2016 and all the things that happened in that year, it just seems like 2016 was a more divided year than we've ever seen happening in our nation at all. There's a guy who predicted that eventually the United States will split into five sections because of all the diversity that's going on in our nation. And the way things are going, you can see that very well happening because when you look at the, the Northwest versus the Northeast nor versus the South, we all have different opinions of our nation. And we're so greatly divided on that. Okay. I'm not moving the clicker today. Did you do that or did I? You did that, Stan? All right, well, I'll figure out where our clicker's not clicking. You might have to reach up there and plug that thing back in or not. But while you're doing that, we can do this. March of 2016, we had a sermon, and in that sermon, it was called A New Direction. And we said, blessed is the nation to God is the Lord. And we believe we are actually a nation that is blessed by the Lord, right? We believe that very much. But yet, the things that we see around us happening always make us question what is going on there. And in that process, we had a key verse. And I don't know if you remember the key verse. It was. It says, pass through, pass through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, remove the stone, raise a banner for the nations. You know what we saw this year that was unusual? We had picked that as our key verse for the church for the year. And what did we see that was really unusual about that? It was this. Remove the stones. And I don't know if you think about it this year, but how many stones came to the surface in our nation this year? Abortion came to the issue at the top. This bathroom issue came to the top this year. You stop and you think about all the issues that raised to the top that our nation got into the great discussion on. Gay rights, you know, the freedom of speech that we all have became an issue this year when you look at that. And yet, we all don't think much about it, but that prayer, when we gave that prayer and picked that verse, this is what we saw happening throughout our nation. In the process of trying to remove those stones. Did we remove any stones in this church this year? What did we do this year? This year we actually took time. We changed our constitution this year, didn't we? We defined marriage. We decided marriage is between what? A man and a woman. Can you believe that? You know? We also defined our definition of abortion. We also came to conclusions like bathrooms are for him and bathrooms are for her based upon your gender specific. Huh? Interesting things, isn't it? Things that five years ago we would never even thought the question had been brought up as part of the stones that this nation is starting to deal with. Raise a banner for the nations and we saw what's happening in the different groups and how divided our nation became this year for that. It's not going to work, so I'll just do it, do it this way, Stan. In the news, we focused on two things this year. We ask you to pray for our nation. And lately, we've been asking you to pray for Israel. Why are those two things important to us? Because this is our home, isn't it? And we know that prophecy tells us, the Bible tells us, those countries that bless Israel are going to be blessed. And those countries that curse Israel are going to be what? Cursed. 
And yet, what direction did we go this year? I don't know if you guys were watching during Christmas break some of the things that happened this year that were quite interesting. First of all, on December 24, the U.S. restrained from voting on a U.N. resolution against Israel. The f we haven't done that for many, many years. And er every time we have done it, there's been a price to pay for it. Then on top of that, that very same day, as we talk a little bit about this one, the UN created a back blacklist of companies who would do business in Israel settlements. Do you know what a lot of those companies are? They're Christian-based companies, are Jewish-based companies. And the UN is now creating a back blacklist, and they're spending $138,000 Create this list. So if you are part of the settlement in Israel and you're building these new homes, your name will be on that blacklist and they will make sure you don't get your supply stuff and all the stuff you need to do your job. This is what happened during Christmas break while we were all enjoying our break. On January 15th, because of what our president and our Secretary of State did, we now see that the nations can say it's okay to get together and 70 nations will gather in Paris to discuss the future of Israel. And if they get their way by January 20th, the UN will pass a resolution to split Israel. That's how quick this is coming towards us. And if you did not listen to John Kerry's speech of his defense of the UN resolution, you should go back and listen to it. The hatred he has for Israel and the fact that he believes the two-state solution is going to bring peace to this world. We know that eventually peace in Israel is going to come but it's going to be an interesting thing to get there. It's not going to get there the way it is. And now we learn more and more that you can't say she and you can't say he. The new Z training that they're spreading through our schools and military. You are a what? You're a Z or you're a here. And don't fool you. Go to Sherman School and talk to that principal and you want to know she has terms for every little kid and it's not boy and girl. It is different names she calls them. You know, all part of this agenda that we laugh about. We think this is funny, but it's in our own schools today. They're being taught that you're not a he or you're not a she. This is what happened in 2016, and yet it was a great year for a lot of us, wasn't it? Well, let's take a few minutes and let's go back and review some of the Bible prophecies that happened in 2016. I think it's interesting to know that we look at day-to-day -day events, but we don't really see how God is putting the picture together. If you remember the time between the Old Testament, there's 400 years of time when God did not speak there. 400 years of quietness. And during that 400 years, the road infrastructure was put together. The Greek language was spread throughout the nation. A lot of pieces were put together before Christ was able to come. And we don't stop and realize today we're watching the pieces all come together around us. Zechariah 12, 3 says this. And it shall happen at that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who will heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. See, it says, this was the day the UN Security Council voted unanimously to come against Israel. America abstained, which is extensively voting with the other members. She symbolically became the world's Birdsome stone. 
Do you realize we're the only nation who has kept this from happening before? Every nation on the Security Council has voted in favor of these UN resolutions except for us. And by allowing this to go through, we've now opened up the door for the other UN resolutions that are quickly coming down the pipe. Did Israel become a burden stone? The whole world does not like Israel today. And the sad part, we're on that list of being against Israel. Let's look at 10 previous times America faced major disaster after attempting to divide Israel. Do you think we've had any of those disasters happen around us? We have. Let's give you an idea. Over the past several decades, whenever the U.S. government has taken a major step towards the division of the land of Israel, it has resulted in a major disaster hitting the United States. This keeps happening over and over again, and yet our leaders never seem to learn blah, blah, blah. Because the United States has veto power on the UN Security Council, nothing can get passed without our support. And it has been the policy of the US government for decades to veto all anti-Israel resolutions that come before the Security Council. Well, what happened when we did not in 1979 is a prime example. It says the last time the US government refused to veto an anti-Israel resolution at the UN Security Council was in 1979. On March 22, 1979, the Carter administration chose not to veto UN Resolution 446. Started, Paul started in this two-state solution thing. Four days after that, on March 26, the Egyptian-Israel peace treaty was signed in Washington. As a result of that treaty, Israel gave up a tremendous amount of territory. Two days later, on March 28, the worst nuclear power plant disaster in U.S. history made headlines all over the globe. Anybody remember which one that was? Three Mile Island, wasn't it? We don't see a coincidence. We just think Three Mile Island happened, don't we? On October 30th, 1991, President George H. Bush opened the, Ma the Madrid Peace Conference, which brought Israel and Palestine together to negotiate for the very first time. In his opening speech, Bush told Israel that territory compromise is essential for peace. At the exact same time, quote, the perfect storm was brewing in the North Atlantic. This legendary storm traveled 1,000 miles the wrong direction and sent 35-foot waves slamming directly into President Bush's home in Maine. That storm broke all predictions of the patterns that they had expected for it. Do you think there was a message in that one? And it was called the perfect storm. On August 23, 1992, the Madrid Peace Conference moved to Washington, D.C., and the very next day, Hurricane Andrew made landfall in Florida, causing $30 billion in damage. It was the worst national disaster up to that time in U.S. history. On January 16, 1994, President Clinton met with President Assad of Syria, and I remember that, to discuss the possibility of Israel giving up the Golan Heights. Remember that one? Within 24 hours, the devastating Northridge earthquake hit Southern California. It was the second worst natural disaster up to that time in U.S. history. Do you see a pattern happening here? On January 21st, 1998, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Nahu arrived at the White House but received a very cold reception. So the reception he got about, a, was it two years ago when Obama stiffed him at one of those meetings? This is not his first time. In fact, President Clinton and Secretary of State, Secretary of State Madeleine Albright actually refused to have lunch with him. That exact same day, 
Monica Lewinsky scandal broke, sending the Clinton presidency into a tailspin from which it never recovered. Any more coincidences you want to see? On September 28, 1998, Secretary of State Madram Albright was working on finalizing a plan which would have had Israel give up approximately 13% of Judea and Samaria. On that precise day, Hurricane George slammed into the Gulf Coast with winds gusting up to 175 miles an hour. Can you see the coincidence? They just go on and on when we look down through here. On May 3, 1999, Palestinian leader Yasser, Yasser Arafat was supposed to hold a press conference to declare the creation of the Palestinian state with Jerusalem as the capital. On that precise day, the most powerful tornadoes ever recorded in the U.S. ripped through Oklahoma and Kansas. At one point, one of the tornadoes actually had a record wind speed of 316 miles an hour. On April 30, 2003, the roadmap to peace that had been developed by the so-called Quartet was presented to Israel Prime Minister Ariel Sharon by U.S. Ambassador Daryl Kurtzner. Over the next several days, the U.S. was hit by a staggering 412 tornadoes. It was the largest tornado cluster ever recorded up to that time. See the incidents that happen? Every time we try to get in the middle of this peace thing, we have problems. In 2005, George W. Bush, the son of George H., convinced Israel that it was necessary to move all the Jewish settlers out of Gaza and turn it entirely over to the Palestinians. You remember that incident? Many of us remember that when we watched the news of them dragging these poor people out of their homes to get them out of there. According to the New York Times, the very last of the settlers were evacuated on August 23, 2005. On that precise day, a storm that would be given the name Katrina started forming over the Bahamas. And we all know the outcome of what happened to Katrina, don't we, on it. On May 19, 2011, Barack Obama told Israel that there must be a return to the pre-1967 borders. Three days later, on May 22, a half-mile-wide EF-5 multiple vortex tornado ripped through Joplin, Missouri. According to Wikipedia, it was the costiest single tornado in U.S. history. What did it do to that town? It totally wiped it out, didn't it? The UN Security Council resolution that was passed on Friday is the biggest betrayal of Israel in modern history. And the person who wrote this article says, as I explained in my last article, I believe that America's re reprieve is now over and all hell is about to break loose in the con this country. When Barack Obama blocked the UN Security Council from dividing the land of Israel in September of 2015, according to the word of God, we should have been blessed as a nation. As a result, and we were blessed. But now Barack Obama has cursed Israel by stabbing him in the back at the United Nations. And according to the word of God, we should be cursed as a nation as a result. Isn't that amazing? The things that happen when we go against Israel. And it's not our policy to go against Israel. Yet we do that very same thing. It says the great falling didn't stop falling in 2016 we see many of our churches come out and support the bathroom issues we see them come out and support the gay issues and even the abortion issues this year thing we've never seen possible one of the prime examples is the Pope you know it says here many evangelical churches became nothing more than advocates for open borders and multiculturalism the social group made such giant inroads and salvation issues became unrecognizable. Emergent postmodernism raged. Other churches fell into lukewarmness. Hardly any would deal with the issues of the day or the Lord's return. What does Revelations tell us? It says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold nor, or hot, so then because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. 
and we're seeing that happening today. Now, I know it sounds kind of ironic, but do you realize the churches that are the big churches that have fallen away to this lukewarmness are the churches we see in decline today? You guys can come on in. You got, you know, are the ones who are now losing members. The churches that are starting to grow today are the churches who are staying with the biblical standards of God's word. It sounds kind of funny, but that's exactly what we're seeing happen. Our younger generation is looking for answers. Answers that our culture is not giving them at all. The longing for a man with a plane was never so prominent. You remember this? What was Donald Trump's slogan? The man with a plan. He had a five-point strategy to make America great again. And our nation was divided right down the middle on these issues, wasn't it? You know? It's the first time I ever seen electoral advertising for our, tell our electoral people to vote against Trump or against Hillary or whatever it was, you know? CNN in one of their pages wrote this, is there a leader who can stop the chaos and heal, chaos and heal America? And many people believe Donald Trump's the man, don't they? And maybe he will solve many things. Maybe he will bring us back to greatness again. And we keep praying for that because we need our nation to go into a revival. That's where we need to be. 2 Timothy 3, character was an override in 2016. Various presidential candidates were consumed with pride and self arrogandizement. Values seemed to tank this past year. National industries featured same-sex ads with no shame. It's saying like everyone was drowning the lake of my, me, myself, and I. What does 2 Timothy tell us in 3? It tells us this, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, and etc., and etc. And we're seeing that around us all the time going on today. If you want to be a presidential candidate, can an ordinary man be a presidential candidate today? No, you need money and lots of it in order to be able to even apply for the candidacy anymore. That was not what our Constitution was intended to be at all. And yet we see the outrage that's happening because a businessman got into the White House and not a politician. And we're seeing the outrage that we see from that. Israel, we talked about this back in September, if I remember right, or in August, we talked about Israel reconvened Sanhedrin, took the momentous step of nominating a high priest for the temple. First time they've done that to prepare for the temple. They are preparing to build that third temple. Everything is together. Malachi 2.7 says, For the lips of a priest should keep knowledge, and people should seek the law from his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. And that's what Israel believes. And that's what Israel wants to go to. Back to that Jewish system of sacrifice. Israel struck Damascus in early December. First time they've ever done that. They, they actually bombed the surrounding area around Damascus. Do you know what the story is about Damascus? says, Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. So we know there's a battle coming for that area. And what else did you notice? How many of you noticed this? I think Chelsea and Justin brought this to my attention. I didn't even know this happened. God continues to intervene for his sovereign nation of Israel. In November, he sent a pillar of the cloud of dust and rain to push back ISIS on Israel's border. He who keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps, Psalms 121. The cloud and dust and rain stayed right at the border and did not cross into Israel. At the time, ISIS was shooting bullets across into Israel and stuff. 
And this storm put an end to that. Put a barrier right down between the two of them. When have we heard of barriers being created before? Wasn't Moses? When he brought the people out of Egypt, remember they were at the Red Sea and God put a barrier. On one side was a cloud of darkness and on the other side was a cloud of light. See, God's still at work for Israel and people don't realize it at all. That's going on. It says, these are stage setting for the tribulation natural disasters, which are far worse than anything the world has known thus far. Pub publications called many events record setting, unpresented, and are biblical proportions. The Bible calls them birth pains. And these are articles we've seen all over this year. These words came to the top so much. This election was one like we've never seen before. 2016, the hottest year that ever been recorded. You know? Hillary Clinton reveals the two unpresented, unpresented events that cost her the election. These words seem to be coming out. All these biblical words or popular words seem to be popping out all the time anymore. Because I think the whole world knows that the time is drawing near on it. How about the war on cash? Have you been keeping track on the war on cash and how it's been intensified? We now know of countries who have done away with cash. We now know that most people don't get paid in cash. You know, most people, they want you to do direct deposit. This year, the big push, whether you know it or not, was your debit or credit card has what in it? A chip. How close do you think our children are from that chip becoming here and you put your hand on a scanner and you're done? They're just programming one more step. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that's what we do at work. We have to palm scan at work to check in and out. What's that? And your retinas. You see how it's not us that it's going to change. We say we've been taught about the mark of the beast, but our young children, do they know what the mark of the beast is? It's just all the same to them. It's just another step. When they come out and say, oh, let's just put that chip that we've been having on that card for the last two years in your arm, who do you think is going to fall for it? Yeah. Yeah. See, it's, it's coming so quick, and it's so subtle, and we don't even know what's happening. Now, if you go to Europe and you take cash with you, you better not take too much with you, because they can confiscate it. If you take gold or silver with you, they can confiscate it now. They just passed that over in Europe. Why? They don't want money around. They don't want you to have cash in your hands. When I go to, the other day I was at Costco, Bought some stuff, and I don't know what I did with the receipt, right? And I go up to the guy, and I go, I can't find the receipt. You know? So I finally went back and found the receipt. But you know what he told me? He says, no big deal. Go over there, they'll just print you a new one. Everything I buy at Costco, they know, don't they? They can tell you exactly. If you go up to them and ask them, how many rolls of toilet paper did I buy in 2016? You know what they're going to do? They'll tell you. <laughs> Scary, isn't it? But the information age is here. We don't realize how many, they, every cell phone call we make, every landline call we make is being recorded. We don't think much of it. And what is this latest thing that's out? Uh, OK Echo, is that the one? And what is the other one? Those little boxes they've been advertising so much during Christmas? Alexis, yeah. You know? Okay, Alexis, play me this song. Did you ever track and see how that works? All of what you say, that machine, 
keeps track of. Now, it's supposed to say, when you say the words, okay, Alexis, but it learns you and understands you. So it puts all that information of yours, feeds it to a main computer back wherever, and that main computer feeds back that information. And they learn your habits and your traits from that. All because of a box. Now they say, well, it isn't until you say those magic words that that box really activate. But do you really know that? And then they interviewed a few people, and they asked them, they said, what, why do you want that box? And he said, well, I have nothing to hide. There's nothing I say that can't be recorded. Well, what happens when they come after you, and you're sitting there talking to a friend jokingly about something? What's going to happen then when they look at you and say, uh -uh, you said this. Yeah, you're guilty, aren't you? It's called the Minority Report, a program that programs to see if you're going to commit a crime ahead of time. We have that program, in case you want to know. It's, government has it. Gog Magog players are getting ready. Remember Ezekiel 38? It tells us the players are going to be there in the end time. Do you realize they're all in play right now? Russia is moving down into Syria, and Turkey is turning relationships to them. All of it's coming together. This all happened in 2016 when Russia decided to go in and, and take care of those terrorists that the United States can't seem to take care of. And today we see ISIS being pushed back, and we're seeing what else is happening to those other groups. Europe is a meltdown. This year, we saw the first time a satanic ritual for a major event where major leaders attended in Europe of the opening of this, what was it called? The Gothram Base Tunnel in Switzerland. And we can go on the website and watch that satanic ritual that they went through. You know, unheard of. We've never seen stuff like this happen in our world today. Christian Today scorned the Lord's return. This is the article they wrote. Why a zombie invasion is more likely than a religious apocalypse. They don't understand that God's plan is being put together. They think an zombie invasion is more realistic than God's plan. And this is from a magazine called Christian Today. It says the predicted rise of Ezekiel continue to be foretold in 2 Timothy 3. And we see that all the time. The latest word that we're hearing now is called spirit cooking. Now people say, what is spirit cooking? It's another name for worshiping demonic. And what we're finding out is more people are involved in it than we realize. This is one of the things that got Hillary in trouble. Because in her emails, there was a conversation about spirit cooking. Now, what she meant, we're not 100% sure. But the term for today is a new term that's entering the demonic world. You and I, we think of that as something in the innocent. We don't know what to think of that word. But to those people, it has a very specific meaning. And if you want to look it up, just go on the Internet. The run out of the lawlessness and the tribulation has begun. It says there was post-election rioting. The first time we've ever seen that happen after an election where the country actually rioted. In 200 cities, we had riots. Or you might want to call them protests, but Portland called them riots for what happened there. These are just the things that happened. We know about what happened with the gay agenda and how aggressive it became this year with the bathroom issues and all that, the court issues, the, predi the predicted rise of persecution of Christian and Jews intensified. City of Houston demanded pastors for their sermons, and so did the state of Georgia. 
These pastors had to literally protest and take it to court to get this stopped. That these people wanted to review their sermons and go through their past sermons. What were they looking for? Hate speech? Things maybe spoken against somebody else? The very things that we preach about here today. It says, for most of these to play out required the prophecy rise of strong delusion. And we have seen that time and time this year where people are, there is no common sense anymore, as we call it. We see it happen around us all the time. Global warming is a greater danger than radical Islam. This is what our leaders have told us. Does that make any sense at all to you? It doesn't. None of this makes sense at all to what's going on. Technology giants came against Righteous One again. For Facebook and YouTube and Google and those others, how many times have you seen them take down Christian sites? It's happening all the time. We just don't realize it. The latest one that we can talk about is for the Christian film, I Am Not Ashamed. They took that site down because they thought it was too offensive. How can that be? These are just a few of the things that happen. But this is the best part. Remember that 400 years we talked about between the Old Testament and Christ returning? What do you think is happening today for us? All the precursors for the tribulation and the rapture are coming together. Everything the Bible says, we look up here, everything the Bible tells us is happening each day, a piece of it is coming together. So, things are not falling apart. They're just falling into place. We should not be distraught. We should be excited for what's happening. Because our future is in Jesus Christ, isn't it? We know the outcome already. We know where we're supposed to be. Isaiah 62.10. Remember that verse? It says this, pass through, pass through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, remove the stones, raise a banner for the nations. How do we remove stones? We have to expose them, don't we? We have to identify those stones and what they are, and then we can work at removing them. I mean, just go down the highway and we see a little pebble. We don't even pay attention to it. But if there's a big rock in the road, do you drive over it? No, you drive around it and sometimes you stop and take it off the road because you know the damage you could cause others. That's where we need to be. I want to share the vision of our church. I shared this with the congregation. I are with the, at the congregational meeting. I want to share it with you. I want to share, we look at the doom and gloom around us, and we realize we need, we should have hope in 2017. 2017 is going to be a great year for all of us. Oh, we know persecution may come. We know all these other things may come. But look at the hope. Here's some of the stuff we talked about at the congregational meeting. Things that we feel that our church can grow. Our church can go in a right direction because people need to know the message of Jesus Christ. You know, 2017, we're going to put a storage room on that shed. Somebody says, well, that's not a big deal. You put a storage unit on, what's the purpose of the storage unit? It frees it up so we can put bathrooms out there. Why do we want bathrooms out there? So we can save that walking back and forth, right? And on those slick sidewalks as we see out there right now. These are visions that we have for this church down the road. Now these visions don't happen with just one person or two person. It takes all of us to share a vision. It takes all of us to see the vision and the fact that God's word can go out and reach you and every other person and our neighbors, which need to know Jesus Christ. Let's go back one just a minute here. Here's another thing that we like to do someday. 
in the near future. Build a youth center, a place where our young people, right now, if you're in Awanas and you're on here on Tuesday night, you watch 14 people in a room, 10 by what? 15 or whatever that is. I don't even think it's 10 foot wide. Might be seven or six, eight, you know, as they all cram in there. What an exciting it would be to see a place where they could call their own. And about six or seven years from now, we'd like to see more classrooms to make a want to grow. You know, we're limited now to, what, 60 to 80 kids is about all this building can handle on Tuesday night. But there are so many young people out there who, like we've discussed, all the issues of this world are in front of them and they do not know how to respond to them. And we have answers. We want to share that with people. So that's the vision when you look at it. But we cannot get to that vision unless we follow the commission that God has given us. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the what? End of the age. He never told us once to stop not taking the Great Commission to others. Now, the United States is a mission field right now. We look at back in history and the United States was the one who sent missionaries out. Do you realize today countries send missionaries to the United States? Unheard of. We should be leading the nation, the world, in presenting Christ to them. We can do that. So welcome to our 2017. I want to give, leave you with this one last thought. It says this. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. And what's it say down there? Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. If you are here in Bible study on Wednesday night, you would be learning about prayer. You would be learning the importance of what it is to have individual prayer, community prayer, and how we communicate with God. That's important for us to know. So see, I think 2017 is going to be a great year. I'm so excited. I'm looking forward to what God has in store for us. Amen. Let's close in a word of prayer. Father, we look at all the stuff that happened in 2016, and you know something, Lord? We can only rejoice. Many of the things that we discussed quietly got brought out. And many of the things that we saw people take stands on, which we never expected. We've seen the church take stand on issues that contrary to your very word. But Lord, this is just a sign for us to tell us that we need to be thankful that you came and died on the cross for us. Thank you, Lord, that we know that our hope is secure in you. And 2017 will be a great year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's sing Away in a Manger, shall we?